at your river of impossibility, what has captured your heart? Is it fate or is it fear? Are you letting the enemy write you out of the story God has for you because fear has conquered you? When you look back at your past and all the things you almost did, or, or looked maybe at the things you never tried, maybe you reflect back right now on, on when you thought for sure that there was something that you were made to do, called to do, yet ultimately that endeavor just failed. Do you think one of the things that kept you from accomplishing your dreams or, or fulfilling that calling has to do with something that maybe has even gripped all of us and sometimes even controlled our ability to move forward in the midst of things and, and actually just try again after we failed? For many of us today, I think this emotion, this emotion called fear, has kept us stuck right in our tracks and has forced others not to even try something new again because we are so fearful of what might happen if we put ourselves out there just one more time. Fear. Uh, it is the false expectation appearing real. And we face this fear by asking, well, really, what's the worst thing that could happen? And many times, we don't take the next step to see what will happen because we are afraid actually that worst thing might just happen. Webster's definition of fear is this. It is a distressing emotion aroused by impending danger, pain, evil, and I love that, etc. Just add whatever else you want to. Whatever the threat is, real or imagined, fear sometimes comes over us. Uh, when my children were really young, I remember one of them yelling out and calling for me in the middle of the night because they know mom would never wake up. And I would get to their room and and say, what is it? What's wrong? And they'd say, Daddy, I, I'm, just, I'm just scared. And well, what's the first thing as parents we would say? Oh, honey, don't be scared. There's nothing to be scared about. And did that ever work? <laughs> Probably not. It didn't work for my kids. And then we would turn on the lights and look under the bed and in the closet, and then we'd pray with them and tell them everything's going to be all right. Or we would lay there with them until they fell asleep and felt safe again. And then we would wake up and it'd be like six in the morning and, and we were still in their bed. But we did all of that because we saw the fear in their little eyes and we heard it in their voices. And, and we wanted to communicate to them, child, everything's gonna be all right. You don't have to fear. In the Bible, God does the same for you and for me. He spoke to Joshua right after he told him he was going to lead his people the Israelites into the promised land, the land he promised their ancestors generations earlier. And now that time had come and Joshua, this young leader, was to lead them into this great land. Look at what God said to Joshua. He said, no one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you or forsake you. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. So when you hear those words spoken to Joshua, what do you think the number one reason that God said those words to him? You see, I think the number one reason that God spoke these words over Joshua and told him, hey Joshua, do not fear, was because God knew that Joshua was afraid. And wouldn't you be afraid? I mean, let's think about it. Your mentor Moses is dead. You are young and inexperienced. You have a few million grumpy people and you're trying to lead them across the Jordan and into the land that was promised to them by God. Wouldn't you be afraid? And you see, this conversation is wrapped around something that is absent and yet something that is present. The reason God talks about fear is because Joshua was fearful. So he said, hey, be strong and courageous, Joshua. He speaks into him and he speaks over him. I, I love what Erwin McManus says. He's a, a pastor in LA. He says, courage is not an emotion, it's an action. And when you live by fear, you feel what? Well, you feel fear, right? So when you live by courage, you feel what? Well, most of you would say courage, but I think you're wrong because you feel fear. 
When you step out in courage, it's not that your fear has all of a sudden just gone away. No, you just have made a choice that fear will not control you or keep you from doing something you know you are supposed to do. So you step out in courage in spite of your fear. So the question is, if you feel fear with both, why don't you just live with courage? Well, that question is easier said than it is to answer. For the space between you and God, let's say, the space between the person God wants you to be and who you are, many times if we're honest, that space is just filled with fear. And it actually keeps us from stepping into that space and trusting that God will be with us in our fear. And in that space that is unknown, we sometimes stop and trust ourselves and our emotions and our fear instead of trusting God. And we never get to experience all he has for us. Irwin's wife, Kim, asked him a question recently, and it was this. In this season that we're in, Irwin, what, what do you think people are most afraid of? Are they afraid of death or are they afraid of getting sick? Everyone keeps talking about the end of things. When is this thing going to end? When is this pandemic, for instance, going to be over? Some people even said, this is the end of our freedom as we know it, but we all come around and go, when is it all gonna end? And he says, isn't it odd that we wanna know the end of things we cannot control? <laughs> And think about it, 2,000 years ago, the disciples were having the same conversation with Jesus. Jesus, when's the end gonna come? When are things gonna come to an end? And when is your kingdom gonna reign? And Jesus said this, I don't know. I think we should be scared. I think you should be scared of the man you, you say you follow. This Jesus says, I don't know when the end is coming. But Jesus went on and he said, hey, I don't know, but my father knows all of that. And that's really the wrong question to be asking. Stop asking when everything is going to end and start asking what you should be beginning. And many times we can't control the circumstance or the situation or the outcome or the end, but yet if we're honest, many times it just controls us and it keeps us from stepping forward and beginning something new. Yet the one thing you can control and work on, and for some you can even end, is the fear that consumes or even controls your life. But we don't even seem to face that. Well, Joshua faced fear right in the face, and today God wants to teach you how to do the same. How to navigate through the fear, not go around the fear. And how you can live a strong and courageous life for Jesus. What you begin to do today will shape who you are tomorrow. Let me say that again. What you begin to do today will shape who you are tomorrow. So the Israelites, they're coming up to the Jordan. They're camped there on the Jordan's edge for three days. For three days, these people sat on the shores watching the rushing river come by. And after all that they had been through, I'm guessing they began to question, maybe even wonder. Some of them even fear as they looked on and thought, wait, millions of people, all of our animals, all of our possessions, we have to cross over this raging river, which was at flood stage at this time of year. How in the world are we ever going to do that? And humanly speaking, and from their track record of unbelief, I bet they started to fear what they couldn't see and what they couldn't control and what they were scared to death to step into. This raging water was right in front of them. And I guess to them, the promised land didn't look very promising standing on the water's edge because you see, they couldn't see how they were going to get to the other side and they still had to face their enemies when they got there. So here's what Joshua told them as they were about ready to step out. After three days, Joshua's officers went throughout the camp giving orders to the people. Hey, when you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God and the Levitical priests carrying it, you are to move out from your positions and follow it. Then you will know which way to go since you have never been this way before. But keep a distance of about 2,000 cubits between you and the ark. Do not go near it. Joshua told the people, consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. So the first thing the Israelites had to do was they had to step out. They had to follow. They had to trust God was leading them into the promised land. And as they stepped out, what we understand was God was preparing them. 
as he was about to act in a miraculous way on behalf of his people. But the people themselves had to play a part. Joshua tells the people to prepare themselves. Here's what I want you to do. I want to, you to sanctify yourselves. Tomorrow, God will do amazing things among you. And some of you, if you're honest, you, you've been trying to go at life on your own. You've been walking blindly and without God for some time now. And you need to understand to face your fears, you have to put yourself face to face before God first. And to know what God wants from you and for you, you have to actually know Him. And that is why God has given us His Word. So you get to know Him in a real and personal way. You have to get into His Word so His strength and His powers and His way can get into you. And when you're walking through a crisis, I want you to remember, the Lord provides the light you need for the journey you are on. And sometimes, and most of the time, if we're honest, it's just enough light to take that next step. And I have found out many times, it is just that. It is just enough. And that will enough, and that will be enough to see you through. But you have to see him through his word before you will ever see your way through to the other side. See, you want to get in front of your fear? You want to have peace in your circumstances? Well, then you have to get God's word in you and let God go before you. Israel would accomplish this impossible task as they stepped out and set their eyes upon God's presence and consecrated themselves for what was before them. But first, they had to step out and trust what God was asking them to do. This wasn't just a physical battle that they were facing. This was a spiritual battle. So they needed to be spiritually ready for what they were about ready to face. See, when you set your eyes on the Lord, it sets you up to see the Lord work in amazing ways. Joshua said, hey, when you set yourself apart for God, when you step out with him leading and face your fears, tomorrow God will do amazing things among you. See, what you begin to do today with God will shape who you are tomorrow for God. One writer said this, It is because we lose sight of a God who can do the incredible and the impossible that we meet frustration, futility, and then we fall into fear. So these people, as they prepared themselves, God was preparing a way for them. And he gave their leader eyes to see the things they could not see. And Joshua saw his circumstance through a divine viewpoint and not a human viewpoint. He saw his God saw, and he had the courage of God because he knew his God. And when they stepped out, that's when they met God. When they stepped out, that's when they saw a miracle right before their eyes. So to face your fears, you have to step out. And the second thing is, you got to step in. You have to step out in faith so you can step into your fears with great trust in your God. Listen to what happened when they stepped into the raging waters of the Jordan. And as soon as the priests who carried the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, set foot in the Jordan, its waters flowing downstream, he said, this is what will happen. It will be cut off and stand up in a heap. Isn't it interesting? God didn't hold them back from the flood. He didn't tell them to, to go around the river, to go around the problem. The people actually in this moment didn't even choose to retreat and go back from the rivers because they thought its rushing, rushing raging waters were going to be too much for them. No, God asked them to trust and believe and follow the leadership of Joshua. And as they step out, they needed to step into the waters. First, I need you guys to step foot into the Jordan. <laughs> And the waters that are flowing downstream, when you step in, guess what will happen? They will be cut off, and then they're going to stand up in a heap. And for us, God's saying, step in and trust that it is I, the Lord your God. I brought you here. It is I who will keep you and preserve you here. And it is I, the Lord God Almighty, that will take you from here to over there. But you got to take the first step, and I will provide the rest. Let me tell you, you might never see the power of God if you just keep hanging out on the shore, if you just keep hanging out close to the water, if you play it safe all the time and hang out on the dry ground, you might miss out on 
all that God has for you. You see, I think he is asking some of you to take a step into the impossible and see what is possible with your God. As the story goes on, we see that the Israelites cross over the rushing Jordan River at flood stage. A nation of over two million strong with belongings and livestock, they made it safely to the land promised by God. God was glorified. Joshua was exalted as their leader, and the Israelites were encouraged and changed. They were stronger, they were wiser, as they faced their fear and conquered their enemies. You see, the Jordan, that was the obstacle that was keeping them from the Promised Land. It was the river of impossibility and the river that struck fear in their souls. And I want you to know today that God is standing on the shore of your river of your storm, in the overwhelming waves of your fear, and he is shouting, do not be afraid, for I am your God and I am with you wherever you go. Be strong and courageous. And as I ask you to step out in faith, would you step in as well and experience my faithfulness and my promises to you? For you see, as your God, I am with you I am for you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. See, what you begin to do today will shape who you are tomorrow. Remember what God said to Joshua and the Israelites as they stood on the shore and saw the river of impossibility. If you step in tomorrow, God will do amazing things among you. So let me ask you a couple questions. At your river of impossibility, what has captured your heart? Is it faith or is it fear? Are you letting the enemy write you out of the story God has for you because fear has conquered you? Maybe if you're honest, you say yes to that question because fear has captured your heart. Well, that means God hasn't captured your heart. Let me ask you another one. What is God asking you to let go of the edge of your storm? At the edge of your Jordan? At the impossible that might be right in front of you? See, in short, maybe he's asking you to let go of your fear or your problem and, and choose faith. Maybe he's asking you not to try and control things out of fear. Because can I just remind you, you aren't in control anyway. <laughs> Instead, entrusting to God the uncertain things that you can't control, and trusting Him with your life. I just want you today to maybe accept that there are some things that you can't control. First, could you do that? If God has given you control over something, then act with courage and righteousness and face it. And if you don't have control over something, may you just heed those words of God to fear not, to let go and entrust the outcome to your God. Trust that whatever the outcome may be, God will be with you, providing everything you need. And it is just enough. And I have seen this over and over in my life, that God will make a way when there seems to be no way. So today, maybe we face it. We feel it. But we let go because we can't control it. Let's be people that step out and face our fears knowing that we are not alone. And let's step in and trust that God will see you through to the other side. Because what you begin today will shape who you are to become tomorrow. So today, if you're facing a fear that is impossible, I'm gonna ask you to do something for me because I wanna pray over you. I'm gonna ask you right where you are is just to put your hands out in front of you in a posture like this with your palms up to receive this blessing over you. First, I just want to ask you, do you realize today that God is with you? And if God is with you, then you can face every challenge that lies ahead. God said to Joshua, I am with you as I was with Moses, which is the same promise he gives to you. So today, maybe right where you are, you just say, God, today, I put my trust in you. 
Right here in this moment, I ask you to give me peace in the midst of my fear. I ask you to help me face them, knowing I am not alone. God, I commit to you my life. In this posture of receiving, I give you my circumstances, I give you my fear. And today, in place of that, I receive your power. I receive your presence. I receive your blessing as I step into whatever is before me, knowing that you, my God, you are with me. In Jesus' name, I pray. Hey friends, thanks for joining us. I hope that this episode gave you an extra boost of courage and we wanna help you to eliminate the almost. So if you need that in your life, check out this uh, previous episode. And then next week, we're gonna be teaching on the most surprising story in the Bible. So subscribe so you'll know when the new episode comes out next week.